give the Lord glory in this place. Hallelujah. Oh, we give you glory and honor tonight. Come on, say, oh, how beautiful, how beautiful are you, Lord, it's your words, it's your love, it's your love, oh, how glorious, oh, how glorious are you, Lord, it's your power, say, it's your power, it's your cross that saves. That saved me and rescued me just a moment there. It set me free. Set me free. Oh, I give you glory, glory. I give you glory, glory. I give you glory, glory. Jesus. How beautiful are you, Lord? It's your word, it's your love. How glorious! Oh, how glorious are you, Lord? It's your power, it's your cross. Oh, that saved me. Just a moment there, set me free. Now give it glory. I give you glory, glory. I give you glory, glory. Oh, I give you glory, glory. Jesus, I give you glory. I give you glory, glory. I give you glory, glory. I give you glory, glory. Jesus, and with the crown of thorns, you became my king forever. And with the crown of thorns, you became my king forever. And with the crown of thorns, you became my king forever. And with the crown of thorns, now let's declare it tonight. With a crown of thorns, of thorns, you became my king forever. And with a crown of thorns, you became my king forever. That saved me and rescued me. Just a moment, oh, it set me free, set me free. Oh, that saved me, saved. Rescue me and rescue me. Just a moment in your presence, Just a Jesus. Moment Set me free. Come on, now say it like this. Te doy, te doy gloria, gloria. Te doy gloria, gloria. Te doy gloria, gloria. A ti, Jesús. Glory, glory, oh, I give you glory, glory, I give you 
rescued me. Just a moment there. Just a moment there. Oh, it set me free. It set me free. Oh, that saved me, saved me. And rescued me. Just a moment there. It set me free. Give him a hand clap of praise. Hola, como estas? Buenos dias. Dios es grande. Amen. Figured if, if Josh was going to sing in Spanish, I'm going to try to do the announcements in Spanish. But that's, that's as far as I'm going to get right there. Amen. So I'm, I'm going to give you guys some announcements tonight. Then we're going to jump right back into worship. Uh, first of all, coming up on July 22nd at 6 p.m. is our last summer Sunday night. We're going to be having our night of worship. It's going to be a great time. Make sure and mark that on your calendar. Plan on attending. Plan on coming out and being a part of that. And then uh, it says a fifth Sunday schedule month, which is our, our celebration Sunday comes on fifth Sunday, which we're going to be celebrating baptism. We're going to be celebrating with communion. We're going to celebrate uh, bringing new families into membership with the church. So it's going to be a full day of celebration. It's also our T-shirt Sunday. So you want to make sure to wear your CRCOG T-shirt or, or your Christian T-shirt or jam session shirt or kids church shirt, whatever shirt you want to wear. But come out and be a part of that. Wear a church shirt. Just make sure you wear a shirt, all right? You know, wear a shirt and come out and be a part, all right? But, but this is a time for us to, to, to just uh, let loose, celebrate, have fun. Now, if you are one of those new families that's coming into covenant with us uh, on that day and you're going to be staying for lunch afterward, make sure that you call Diana in the office and just let her know how many are going to be coming with you. And, and uh, we just need a head count, so just give us an idea of that, all right? And then another thing we have, last, last announcement, then we're going to jump back into worship, uh, Focus Track. Well, we've, we've been asked several times to host a, a special Focus Track on Wednesday nights for those who can't attend on Sunday mornings. So we have set some dates for a Wednesday night Focus Track. It'll be two Wednesday nights here in, in July and then two Wednesday nights in August. So starting July 18th, and then there's two Wednesday nights the first two weeks of August, or actually the second two weeks of August. So if you want to sign up for that, make sure you sign up in the foyer. If you need to be baptized, sign up in the foyer. All right, let's pray and get back into worship. Father, we just worship you tonight. Lord, you are mighty and you are great. Father, I just pray that you have your way in this service, that you would anoint our worship, that, that you would anoint our worship team, our worship leader, that you would anoint the word, Father, as it's given tonight. Lord, let not a one of us leave here unchanged, but let each of us experience you tonight. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. And everybody said, amen. Let's worship. Come on, everybody, put your hands together tonight. Oh, say you are, you are the undefeated one. My life and my salvation With the wicked, my enemies and my foes Came upon me to you to my death They stumbled and fell Come on, give them glory tonight Oh, hallelujah Say, omnipotent Omnipotent Almighty Almighty Defender Defender My victory My victory My refuge The one I run to You are the God you are the God of the breakthrough. Oh, lift your hands up high. Breakthrough. You are the God of the breakthrough. When I can't see my way through, I really don't know what to do. I look to you. Breakthrough. Walls fall down when I shout through. Strong won't break when I pray. I'm gonna praise you, you 
give me a defeated one. My life, my life, and my salvation. And my salvation. When the wicked, my enemies, and my foes came upon me to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Omnipotent, omnipotent, almighty, almighty, defender, defender, my victory, my victory, my refuge, the one I run to, you are the God, you are the God of the breakthrough. Oh, we give you glory tonight, Jesus. Oh, breakthrough, breakthrough, you are the God, you are the God of the breakthrough. When I can't see my way through. Come on, that's it. Lift him up tonight. Come on, let's press him. Let's press him. Even when you don't feel like praising him, come on, let's lift him up. Say, breakthrough in my heart, breakthrough in my mind, breakthrough in my spirit, breakthrough in my soul, breakthrough in my weakness, breakthrough in my struggle. You are the God. You are the God of the breakthrough in my worship, breakthrough in my praise, breakthrough in my lifting glory. By your name, break through when I dance, break through when I shout. Oh, you are the God, Come on. you are the God. Yeah. Break through in my heart, break through in my mind, break through in my spirit, break through in my soul, break through in my weakness. Break through in my you are the God, you are the God, you are the God of the break through in my worship, break through in my praise, break through in my living and glorify your name. Break! 
My God, family, we gotta do that just one more time. Breakthrough in my heart, breakthrough in my mind, breakthrough in my spirit, breakthrough in my soul, breakthrough in my weakness, breakthrough in my strength. You are the God, you are the God, you are the God of the breakthrough in my worship, breakthrough in my praise, breakthrough in my living, glorify your name, breakthrough in my day.
more time because I may be weak. I may be weak. Your spirit strong. My flesh may fail. My flesh may fail. My God, you never will. I may be weak. But your spirit strong in me, Jesus. Your spirit strong in me. My flesh may fail. My God, you never will. I may be weak. I may be weak. Your spirit strong in me. My flesh may fail. But my God, you never will. My God, you never will. I may be weak. I may be weak. Your spirit strong in me. My flesh may fail. My Isn't it good to know that we're serving a God who never fails? Amen. Friends will fail. Churches will fail. Preachers will even fail. But there's a God in heaven who will never fail you. He'll never let you down. Now, if you're, if you're depending on Washington, D.C., let me tell you they're going to fail you. Put your hope in the Lord. Put your trust in the Lord because he'll never fail. Amen. Give him a hand clap one more time tonight. Lord, we bless your name. Great, great are you, Lord. Great is your name. Greatly to be praised is the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 Well, you may be seated if you can. We're delighted to see everyone in service with us here tonight and uh, glad that you're here. How many came to really worship the Lord? Now, come on, be honest. I came to really worship the Lord. Amen. Well, I hope that you've done that because that's what this is all about. It's not about who we can see and who's there and who's not there. It's about worshiping the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And he's in the house tonight. Amen. If you are with us tonight for the first time, let me say welcome to you. Thank you for coming and joining with us. If you would do two things for us tonight. First of all, first time guests, please find a focus card. Fill that out for us and uh, leave it with us. Place it in the offering bag as it comes by tonight. We'll be appreciative of you doing that. Second thing we'd like to ask you, if you're a first time guest, put your money away. <clears throat> Our ushers are coming tonight to receive an offering. But if you're a first-time guest tonight, just put your money away. Enjoy the service. Be blessed of the Lord. Now, the next time you come, you can give double, right? I got six amens on that. So, But uh, seriously, though, if you are a first-time guest, just enjoy the service tonight and worship with us. The rest of us here tonight, if you have your offering in your hand, would you get that out right now? And let's just hold the offerings up to the Lord. If you are a giver, you may not have your offering in your hand tonight, but you are a giver. Would you just raise your hand up unto the Lord right now? Father, we just lift up our hands. We lift up our offerings. We lift up you in worship tonight by the giving of our gifts. Lord, uh, you have done so much for us. And Lord, we, we can't even, if we begin to enumerate all the wonderful things that you've done, we'd be here all night. But God, we just want you to know that we love you and we praise you. And with our offerings tonight, with our tithe that we bring into the storehouse, we just want to worship you and glorify your name. We're going to give this offering tonight, Lord, in your honor and in recognition of who you are. You are the God who never fails. You will never let us down. You have promised that you'll walk with us. Even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you'll be there. When, we, when we're going through the storms of life, you will be there. When, the, when we're walking through the valleys and, and it seems like we're about to be done in, God, you're still there. You've always been there. You will always be available for us. And we just give you praise tonight. We honor you with the giving of these gifts. In Jesus' name we pray. And amen and amen. God bless you as you worship in giving. Hallelujah. It's not over. It's not finished, it's not ending, it's only the beginning when God is in it, and all things are new.
just before dawn this is the hardest season you've experienced and i know it hurts oh but it won't be long you're closer than you think you are you're closer than you've been before so look to the sky to the sky god is on the way help is on the way it's not It's not ending. It's only the beginning. It's only the beginning. When God is in it, all things are new. Ooh, ooh, all things are new. Ooh, ooh, all things. Praise the Lord, everybody. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We just look at your neighbor and say, I'm so glad you got to sit by me tonight. Amen. Now, look at the one you really wished you were sitting by and say, I really wished I was sitting by you. Amen. Thank you, worship team. God bless you. Amen. Musicians, just stay with me for a few minutes. Um, it's good to be in God's house, amen. We've got over, we've got almost 40 people down at Waimama tonight doing camp, and we've got probably another, is this the last week? This is the last week, and it's like it blurred together. We had, a, we had over 100 students this year at youth camp. Come on, somebody. So that's incredible. You know, I got to thinking about tonight, I'm glad to have my sister and and uh, her husband and their family with us today. Uh, tonight, they just pulled in just almost about church time. And um, my sister, is, and my sister, she thinks that on time is 10 minutes late. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I feel you, brother. But anyway, some of you might remember that Tiffany was here as an intern uh, a couple of Two years ago? Three years ago? Four years ago? Four years ago. Amen. So we're, we're thankful. Yeah, go ahead. Um, we tried to ship her in, uh, 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 whip her into shape, so but she wouldn't, so we sent her back. Um, no, I'm just kidding. But it was the first time that we'd ever had an intern, and uh, you started something, really, because you left, and then, then uh, Pastor John come to me and asked me, Pastor, I know we had an intern. How about if we take somebody else as an intern? And I said, well, but the last intern was saved. A little bit of truth to that, wasn't it? Yeah. But, uh, but we saw something in him, or I saw something in him, and, and uh, took a chance on him. And to God be the glory, three years later, three, three years later, he's with us. And... He is now our worship leader, amen, and uh, and then, again, it started, and tonight, so I thought about this as I seen Tiffany come in, tonight, an intern that started as an intern is our worship leader, and another intern is speaking in the youth department tonight, covering for our youth pastor who is at, at uh, youth camp, so thank God. <clears throat> So let me, let me say to you, let me say to you, thank you for giving young men and women an opportunity to come in and minister and learn. Because how many knows that, you know, you, you, do not get to, you do not get to the level of Brother Cash overnight. You got to be learned and, uh, and so, and, and oh, well. All right, that was uh, Donna Russell who said that, R-U-S-S-E-L-L, -L. amen. Uh, so, 
But, uh, but, but anyway, we're thankful. But they're going to come, and, and um, I think my sister's going to, and Tiff are going to come and minister in song. And um, they've asked me to help, I think, a little bit. Um, all right, well, and then we may, let Wendell, we may let Winkle say something. Wendell. They pastor a church in Fairhope, Alabama. And, um, uh, and Tiffany, since the last time you saw her, has married Michael. And no, they're not cousins. Um, they're not cousins, and so, but um, so, but they're but they're children's pastors at the church, and so we're excited. And then their son Derek, who is uh, girlfriends with us, uh, I want to say Skyler, that's not it, Chloe, and uh, they're youth pastors there, so we're excited to have them with us tonight. And um, so, what, which one you want her to, to use, Jim? This one or this one? That one. Thank you, sir. Why don't you give it up for Tiffany and and for. the Lord. Now it's on. I guess while they're getting transitioned over, I just want to say it's such a blessing to be here. Uh, it's been four years since I was able to intern here with uh, my Uncle Ronnie and my Aunt Sherry. And uh, it's, I know I recognize so many faces, and I got to hug a couple of necks. So it's just such a blessing to be back here where I really got my uh, start in ministry uh, training. So it's just really a blessing. Whoa! 
when I don't feel you, you're working. Even when I don't see you, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see you, you're 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 working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. My God, that's who you are. That's who you are. My God, why you make it? Why you make a miracle work? Praise the Lord. Amen. I got that high one time, but I dropped something on my toe. Uh, hallelujah. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Uh, Wendell, come on up and greet the people. Uh, Wendell's doing, they're doing a great job. Been at their church for almost 20 years now. Here, I know you're old. Let me help you. Praise God. Somebody give God praise. He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our praise. This year, I asked uh, our children, of course, they're grown now, where do you want to go? My son-in-law, he got the fever. He said, I want to go see Uncle Ronnie and Aunt Sherry. It's going to save me a lot of money. Amen. I just want to say one thing. The Holy Spirit has spoke to my heart. I'm not a prophet. I'm just a servant. There's a move of God's glory. It's fixing to hit America like never before. All right. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, guys. Go with me in your Bibles tonight. As you're turning there, let me just say... Uh, about my sister and her husband, Wendell, is that they introduced Sherry and I. Yeah. And, uh, and Sherry has never forgiven them. <laughs> Amen. And remember, remember when I told you that I was my own first convert? It happened in their revival meeting. It was my sister who asked me to sing. And, and I sang the only song that I knew, which was crazy for a sinner to know 
and uh, gave my heart to Christ before I got off the piano. And um, so it, it's, it's been a crazy journey. But I love my family. I've, somebody said, you got a sister? I got three of them. And, uh, and we had eight boys and three girls. Two of them, the brothers have passed on. And uh, so, um, but I thank God for family. Good to have y'all. Good to have y'all. Pray for me. They're staying at my house. Uh, amen. But uh, it's okay. It's, gonna, it's all going to be all right. Amen. Because um, they're staying at my house, and I'm staying with Don and Jerry. So, uh, no, I'm just... I want to talk to you tonight about set free to be set up. Set free to be set up. Let's go into the Bible tonight in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians, those of you who have a YouTube, uh, not YouTube, but you probably have that too, but version, you can go to YouVersion, do, go to live events, do a CRCOG search, and you'll find my notes on there. And you can follow along and add to the notes and you don't like the ones I'm giving you, just make up your own. And uh, So let's begin. Here's what it says. Therefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. I will be a father to you. My age is starting to catch up with me. Because I'm starting to see a lot of what's wrong with society is that we have no fathers. I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord. But there, you know, he says now, if, you're going, if, if, if I'm going to be your Lord, then you're going to have to come out from among them and be you separate. Let's pray. Father... Bless the reading of your word. Grant me that which makes preaching easy and effective, and that is the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I give you thanks and prayers for what you've done and who you're doing it through in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. God doesn't call you out for no reason. You know, we, have, we, we are living in a society. Um, uh, me, and, me and Pastor Steve were talking about a book that he's just reading called Messy Grace. And, uh, and, and I'm happy to say that our church is a messy grace church. Now, what does that mean, Pastor? I mean that we've got people here from all walks of life that are all types of messed up. Bump your neighbor say he's talking about you right now. That people are messed up. You know, I had uh, it. Well, no, I won't even go there. Thank you, Lord. Anyway, um, but God doesn't call you out for, for no reason. If God calls you out, he has a reason why he's called you out. And we have a society that we're making decisions for Christ but not becoming disciples of Christ. And we've got a lot of people. I mean, you know, man, our church is filled with people who have made decisions for Christ. I mean, I, I can't remember how many already this year have made decisions, but how many of them have gone on to become disciples? Now, I'm glad to say that we've had 113 go through the focus track, and 40, 57 have completed focus track, and 20, 25 are going to be joining the church at the end of the month. And so that is part of the discipleship process in our church. And I'm excited about that. But here's my thing. 113 have gone through it. Or have attended, but haven't finished. And we're living in a society where we start a lot of things, but we don't finish a lot of things. And I want you to know that God is a finisher. That what he started in your life, he's going to finish. I want you to know that the God that I serve he never consults somebody else concerning what he's about to do in you. I don't know if that excites you, but all of the critics that I have in my life and in my journey, I'm glad that God didn't check with them before he decided to anoint me. I'm glad that he didn't check with them before he decided to call me to preach because I promise you that if he would have checked with some of my friends in high school and, and other places after I got out, they, they would have said I was unqualified. But I'm so glad to come by to tell you today that God doesn't just call you out and just lets you sit there. He calls you out the time 
watch is for a task. And he calls you out to do something in your life. I mean, you know, here we have men and women. We could go through the list of everybody in this room. I'm looking at some of them right now. And thank God that you're not who you used to be. But, you know, you maybe not have arrived. You haven't made it yet. But thank God that there is progression. There's not perfection, but there's progression. And God is doing a work in you. I won't, I won't embarrass him, but, but the, a young man that's here tonight and, and uh, has, has gotten saved a few months or maybe a year ago or no, uh, now, but he, he, something happened today that he was telling me about that he responded in a way that was different than what he used to respond. He said, my old self wanted to punch him in the face, but my new self had to take a step back and say, Jesus, help me. Listen, baby, you can, you can quote all the Scripture you want to, and I believe in learning Scripture and quoting it, but the, but the question that I got for you, is your life different today because Jesus is in it than it was last year or before you came to know Jesus because God's setting you up for something. He, he called you out. He set you free so that He can set you up. See, I, here's what I know about God, that God will bless you right in the middle of everybody else criticizing you. God don't check with your consultants because he delivers us from so he can deliver us to. My God, somebody hear me. He delivers us from so he can deliver us to. Point number one is this if you're taking notes. God won't release until we, we release. That you want God to release what's in his hands, but he's wanting to, you to release what's in your hands. Now, what, Pastor, are you talking about money? Or if you want to talk about money, we can. Absolutely. He won't release what's in your You know, you, 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 want, you, want, to, you want to give God wholesale but want him to bless you retail. That ain't the way God works. But God said, if you will trust me, then I will show you great and mighty things that you have no idea. See, we, when we cry out to God, we want God to change us and, and God is there. Thank God that when we cry out, Jeremiah 33, 3 says when we call on God, He would answer us and show us great and mighty things. I'm telling you, I don't care who you are, where you are, if you will call on God, God hears you. You may say, well, He don't hear a sinner. I don't know about all that, but what I do know is He hears His children and He can hear you. And if you cry out in asking God to help you, He said, I will be there with you. Come on, somebody. Exodus chapter 3 verse 7 says, And the Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I'm concerned about their suffering. See, they were not serving God, but they were crying out unto God. And God said, I heard you when you were cried out. So maybe, maybe you're not where you ought to be with God, but still cry out to God because he said, I'll hear you. And I, I, it didn't go unnoticed. I, I know exactly where you are and I'll come to where you are. See, when we want God to come down and make us change, don't we? That's, I wish God would just come down and do it. I want him to make me change because that would be so much easier when I didn't have a choice. But I can tell you, I would much rather my children, my wife, my family to love me because they want to, not because I make them. I, I want them to love me, and it's the same way with God. That we want God, to, we, God wants us to serve him because we want to. Because God says, if you'll make the start, I'll make the finish. If you'll start toward me, I'll finish what I began in you. See, and I'm not talking about a CD. I'm not talking about a courtesy drop. I'm not talking about, well, you know, I'm just going to help God out. No, I'm not talking about that. What, however, I am telling you that some of us just need to step out from where we are to get to a new place where God is. Continuing to do the same thing over and over is the definition of insanity and expecting different results. When we get out of our man-fearing spirit and into the Holy Spirit, He begins to ride with us and takes us into higher heights and deeper depths than we ever thought we could go. And I'm not talking about getting weird. Lord Jesus, Pentecostals are weird enough. I'm not talking about being weird. I'm just talking about going to deeper depths in Jesus. I'm talking about going to higher heights in Jesus. I'm talking about for your, you know, I don't care how much you speak in tongues. Boy, I'm going to get in trouble right here. I don't care how much you speak in tongues, and I, and I kind of feel like Paul. I speak in tongues more than you all. But if you cannot live right, 
and walk right after you have spoken tongues, then what good did the tongues do you? Because what happens is we start seeking the gift instead of the gift giver. Oh, my God, somebody help me. We start seeking the gift instead of the gift giver. See, I don't seek just, I'll tell you what. No, no, all right. Woo, boy, God's checking me tonight. I can't believe God's checking me. My wife's excited. I've told you many times, my wife says, baby, you need to learn how to edit. I go, I do. Just think if I didn't edit. There are some things that you can't get somebody else to do for you. You know, I thank God for worship. I thank God for talented musicians, talented singers, anointed musicians, anointed singers. But you can't let somebody else worship for you. You just can't do it. You, you, you wonder why, you know, well, well I'm, it, that's just not my, that's not my uh, style. Bull. Bull is not your style. How about when you was out in the club dropping it like it's hot? And now you want to come to church and act like you don't even know how to dance. Like you don't even know how to worship. Uh-huh. I might not can drop it like it's hot, but I can still squat like it's warm. The reality is this, man. You don't have to worship like me. You know, the, I, I knew that I was getting old when that one song, where are we at? What's that one song we did tonight? The, the Breakthrough. I realized I was getting old when I can't sing that song and dance at the same time. I mean, good gracious, breakthrough in a heart, breakthrough in my heart. That's a lot of words in that song that you got to keep up with, and I can't get a breath, I can't get a breath, so I'm just going to worship and shut up. And every once in a while, grant it, God. Breakthrough. But I've still got to worship. I've still got to praise Him. Because let me tell you, I've been serving God now over 30 years. I've been pastoring almost 30 years. But I still know that I have not achieved what God wants me to achieve. And I'm never going to settle for where I am because I know that God is still calling me up to higher heights and to deeper depths. And there are some things that you, somebody can't just do all the praying for you. They can't do all the fasting for you. Don't you love those people that ask you to pray for them and they don't pray for themselves? Oh, I really need prayer. And they never tell you when the prayer answered? Come on. They want you to fast, but they still going to Outback? No, baby. Mm -mm. There is no amount of someone interceding for you and asking for you that will get the job done. You must ask for yourself. Ezekiel 14 and 14 tells us, Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in it, they should deliver but their own souls by the righteousness, saith the Lord God. They delivered their own souls. Man, they were praying for themselves. You got to pray for yourself. You can't just, you can't just depend on somebody else to do the praying for you. Well, pastor, what we need is, is an evangelist. What we need is a more anointed pastor. You probably do. But the reality is I am what you got. But the reality is if you would pray for yourself, it's amazing how much more powerful I would be. Come on. Because can't nobody praise for you. As good as the band is, they can't praise for you. Well, but pastor, no, no hush. Uh, but I just, I don't, I, don't, I don't worship that way. Well, I'm not telling you to worship like me. But if you're going to get anything from God, you've got to learn how to worship. And I'm not talking about worship, worship. I don't know if you caught that. I'm not talking about worship, worship. Worship the song or worship the words. I'm talking about worship Jesus. You know, do, do you know anybody who talks in Hallmark cards? Nobody does that. But Hallmark cards is expressing to the person you bought it for what you wouldn't normally say to yourself or what, what you wouldn't normally use your own vocabulary. It's the same thing with worship. Worship songs is an expression. The, 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 the verbiage is, is, has a melody and it's rhythmic, and if you will do that, it is like a said that, God, I'm, I'm, I'm saying these words, and I know that, that they're not my exact words, they're not mine, but I mean what they said because they can say it better than I said it. Listen, church, God doesn't have any grandchildren. He only has children. 
So I don't care who you are. You cannot worship for somebody else. You cannot do all the work for somebody else. They've got to do it for themselves. I don't care how many times that you were saved. I don't care who you are. My children, and, and I'm, we're, we're third generation uh, uh, Pentecost. My grandmother was Pentecostal. My daddy was Pentecostal. I am. I'm third generation. My children are fourth generation, and they still have to meet God on their own. You talk about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They still had to come to a fullness of who God was. They, you listen, it, what that means, it, it wasn't just clumping them in together. But what that means when it says the God of Abraham, uh, uh, Isaac, and Jacob, it means that at one point in time, Abraham had to find out who God was. Jacob had to find out who God was. And Isaac had to find out who God was. Because I don't care who you are, that at some point in your life, you need to know not the God of your fathers, not the God of your grandmother, not the God of anybody else. You need to know who God is for you. Who? Who does God say that I am? Who does God say? who, Who do you say that I am? It's one thing to, for me to know what Justin says who God is, but who is God to me? Who is God to Gypsy? I, I don't know, but I, I know who God is to me. And at some point in time, you've got to ask that question because you can't get it just because you belong to the right church. You must, I want you to hear it right, you must have a personal relationship with Christ. See, you release what's in his hand and God releases what's in his hand. What's in God's hand? All the goodness, all the things that you need to have the good life. I'm not talking about a life filled with money and things like that, the good life. Because how many knows that you can have money and still not be happy? How do you know? Well, Pastor, I'd like to try. Check out, check out Hollywood. They're crazy. They got more money than Santa Claus, but they're crazy. See, you let go of the things of the world, and he lets go of the things which are in heaven. You release fear, and he releases favor. You release bitterness, and he will, he will release betterness. betterness. Come on. You release, you, you release lack and pride, and he will provide. You've got to release some of these things. You're holding other people bondage and wondering why you can't get a breakthrough. It might be because you haven't released what's in your heart, what's in your spirit. Well, pastor, I just can't forget. Nobody asked you to forget. You can forgive without forgetting. Come on, somebody. Well, then how do I know that if I've forgiven, Pastor? It means that, I'll tell you, this is a good, good way to measure it. If you can look at or be around that person who hurt you, and the pain is not like it once was. That means you're getting better and better. Honey, listen, there will come a time that maybe you, you have to fight to be in the same room with them, but there will come a time if you will continue to let God bless you, that you will dance over what you used to cry over. You will have victory over those things. Listen, I don't let anybody dictate where I'm going to go. I don't care who's done me wrong. My, my, listen, I used to do youth camp. Yeah, we're filming. I used to do youth camp, and, and, and my wife said, and my wife said, baby, why do you keep going? They, miss, they misuse you. They, they treat you ugly. And I said, because, you know, that's my personality. I go, they ain't going to win. I'm going to be a thorn in their flesh. They are not going to make me quit going to youth camp. And I worked 25 consecutive years of youth camp, and I just kept going. I kept going, and I finally got victory. Come on, somebody. I, I can be in the room with them right now, some of the ones that done me wrong, and I might not like them. I'm not going to go to dinner with them, but I can be in the same room, and the pain is not one like it once was. Why? Because I refuse to let bitterness hold me down. I refuse to let unforgiveness hold me down because I know that God has set me free in order to set me up. Now, point number two is this. Point number two is this. You've got to come out of bondage before you can go into abundance. You've got to come out of bondage in order to go to into abundance. And again, pastor, are we talking about money? We can. We sure can. But that's not abundance, just money. Because I promise you, you let somebody that's out of health, they would give all of their money to have health. Come on. There, there are some folks who they're in a bad relationship and they would give all their money if the money could fix their relationship. Abundance is whatever it is that you're believing God for. Come on now. See, God sets you free to lead you in a better way. So if you got saved, God didn't save you just to leave you where you are. He saved you to make your life better. Well, my life ain't any better today than it was when I got saved. Go back to Calvary. 
Go back to Calvary. And let me tell you this. Your situation might not change, but as long as you change. See, prayer changes more about me than it does the situation. I might not can change what everybody else is doing around me. However, I can still be happy. You know, people have asked me, Pastor, how do you worship when hypocrites are around you? I'll tell you how you worship. You look your eyes straight to Jesus and quit looking at everybody and everything that's going on around you because Jesus said, or God said, I change not. I'm the same yesterday today and forever and so I'm going to worship him because he hasn't changed my worship doesn't filter through a hypocrite well that's why I don't go to church because of hypocrites well why do you go to the gym fat people are there huh that's crazy Luke chapter 19 verse 30 let me give you this I'm going to wind it down Luke chapter 19 says this Go you into the village over against you, and in which, uh, in the which, at your entering, you shall find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat. Now, let me just tell you, let me stop right there. Let me just tell you that if you've never tried to ride a colt that's never been rid, son, you in for it. Back when Uncle Josh was alive, I used to help Uncle Josh break Shetland ponies. And man, I'm telling you, you'd get on one of them and it was a ride of your life. My Lord, I remember one time our cousin Jerry got bucked off and got wound up in some electric fence and it kept electrocuting him. And I couldn't go turn it off because I kept laughing. <laughs> he was, turn it off. It was so funny. <laughs> Apparently he didn't think so, but anyway, it was pretty funny. But he said, nobody has ever sat on it. Loose it and bring it here. And if any man asks you, why are you loosing it? Say to them, the master or the Lord has need of it. Why were you loosed? The Lord has need of you. Ah, The Lord has has need of you. Well, Pastor, what would the Lord want with little old me? I don't know. I'm not him. I don't know. But the Lord has need of you. And that's why we've got to spend the rest of our life figuring out what God deposited in us so that we can fulfill what God is calling us to do. Listen, the problem with most people is that they have been loosed but never led. I'm going to let that sink in a minute. You've been loose, but you never led. That's why you act like a donkey. Thank you. That's why you act like a donkey. That's why you won't let. Listen to me. If this donk, if this colt had not have been led to Jesus, then he would still be wild and not submissive to anything or anybody. You know, I, 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 I'm going to turn my back on everybody right now, Papa. Because people want me to be their pastor until they need me to be their pastor. You want me to baptize your babies and bury your mom and daddy and marry your children and all these things. But then when I need to get in your grill and tell you you out of order or get in your grill and say you, you're about to lose out with God, then all of a sudden you begin to go, well, who you think you are? Well, I'm sorry I thought I was your pastor. But apparently I'm not. Come on. And that's the problem. People don't want anybody to tell them what's, their, what's wrong. Well, you're judging me. Well, I'm the pastor. I guess I'm going. I guess I am. You know, people want to get on stage and not live right. Now, I'm not, I'm, I'm not God's CSI team. I want you to hear me. I'm not God's CSI team. I'm not going looking. But if I know, i got to deal with it. And we have. And restored people and so forth and so on. Now, I'm, I've come by to tell you. See, the problem is, if you've been loosed but you've never led, you're just loose and wild. But you're never going to do anything for God. If they hadn't have led the colt to Jesus, he would have never got on his back and rode into the triumphant entry, entry of Jerusalem. So we've got to allow Jesus to lead us where he wants us. So, that, so it's the same thing as you got saved but you ain't doing nothing. To God be the glory, we have 200, and the last, the last count was 242 people 
in our church volunteer somewhere on campus every month. And I'm not talking about like you, you, you teach Sunday school so we count you four times. No. So that's a good, that's a good number. 200, the, the national average is about 20%. And that's, a, that's almost 50, that's, that's about a third. So we're doing a little bit above that. But my question is this. If you got saved, why would you get saved? Well, I, I got saved because I didn't want to go to heaven. Well, I mean, I didn't want to go to hell. Well, that's good. Thank God. But if he loosed you, let him lead you. If he loosed you, let him lead you to do something for the kingdom of God. And listen to me. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. Not that you want to do everything and, and, and not have anybody in authority over you. They run around from here and there and never let the master, the one who released them, sit on their back and take the reins and lead them. And Jesus wants to sit on your back. He wants to be with you. He wants to lead you. He wants to, you know, when you say, Jesus, you are the Lord of my life, that doesn't mean that you're the Lord of my life on Sunday. But the rest of the week, I'm going to live however I want to. No, the Lord of my life means that I give you the reins Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and you lead me and guide me to where I should go. Because now, I, here's what I want you to catch. That, that, that they went to get this colt that no man had ever set on. They brought him to Jesus, and Jesus, you know, that you, and, and, and as picturesque as the Bible is, it doesn't say that Jesus calmed everything down, Got everybody out of the way and then jumped on the back and broke the, and broke the colt. No, he just threw his leg across the back of that colt. And here's what I want you to catch. What's my next one? His presence changed the nature of the donkey. His presence changed the nature of the colt. My God, if you want to change the nature, get into the presence of God. Uh, well, Pastor, I'm at church. I didn't say church. I said in the presence of God. Because you can be in church and still not get into the presence of God. The presence of God is here. But you can still not get into the presence of God. You've got to get into the presence of God and let the Lord change your nature. My, oh, the, the nature was to bunch that guy in the face. But, the, but Jesus put his leg across him one day. And the nature, it changed the nature of who he was. It changed the nature of what he wanted to do. And God can change your nature. He can change the nature of when you want to get upset and do things that are not of God. He can be, if you will just get in his presence. It changes everything. He said, in my presence there is fullness of joy. In my presence there is liberty. In my presence there is freedom. But the freedom is for a reason. See, I want you to understand that the colt had never had a human get on it. And that donkey never had a person to sit, but yet it never bucked, it never kicked, it never reared. And his presence changed that donkey. And if the presence can change the donkey, don't you know it can change you? Come on, look at your neighbor and say, I know he's talking to you right now, donkey. His presence, his presence can change your nature and he can enable you to be a carrier of his presence. We want to be a carrier of his presence. I mean, I, you, know, you, you know, Wednesday night, you know, you got a lot of, you got a lot of, seasoned the saints on Wednesday night. But I thank God we got a lot of unseasoned saints. But I want you to know that God wants you to be a carrier of his presence. He wants you to be, when you walk into the room, when you walk into the room, you walk in with Jesus inside you. He knows, he knows how to make a, calm, a, 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 a chaos, chaotic situation calm. If you will just let him reside in you. See, the Bible said that he told them to go to a certain place at a certain street and you'll find a donkey tied up there and he's just waiting on you to come get him. My God, somebody hear me. See, Jesus didn't just say, go find me a donkey. He gave them specific instruction where to find it. You didn't get saved because God was in the neighborhood. You didn't get saved. He didn't draw you. And you didn't get saved because he, he drew you by his spirit. 
And you got saved because he said, here's where I want you to go find Rodney. You might have to go to prison to find him, but you go find Rodney and I'm going to save him and change his life. You go find Rachel. You go find Don. Whoever it may be, you go find them. And here's where you're going to find them. And when you find them, here's the condition that they're going to be in. They're going to be tied up and wrapped up. Some are going to be tied up in yesterday. Some are going to be tied up in bitterness. Some are going to be tied up in all the things, in, in abuse. Some of them are going to be tied up in, in, in promiscuity. Some are going to be tied up in drugs. Some are going to be wrapped up in addictions. But you let them know that I have need of them and you loose them and I. You loose them and bring them to me. Hey, God is not afraid of where you were or where you are. He knows where you are. Several years ago, several years, and, and Anna Wendell will know where this is at. That's why I'm just saying this. Several years ago, I stopped by the Sand Hills Church. My family was with me. I stopped by little Sand Hills Church. Found the little church where I got saved. And took a picture out there by it. I found it. See, I was, I, I showed the kids. That's right, the kids was with us. Now, I wanted, I wanted them to know, in, in the middle of nowhere, in Sand Hills, Florida, that's not where I lived. I lived in Mobile. I was on vacation, but God knew where to find me. Come on, somebody. My God, I was wrapped up in, in some addictions, and I was wrapped up in my own self-preservation. I was wrapped up in the things that I wanted to do. But my Lord, when Jesus lifted, when the Holy Ghost found me where I was, he began to untie the addictions. He began to untie those things that had me wrapped up and tied up, and he began to bring me to himself, and Jesus put his Lord leg across my back and begin to ride me and, and I, there was a and I'm telling you it, 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 it has been the greatest ride of my life he knew where you were he knows where you are while you're still tied up to your past and oh you know one of the things I love that God didn't wait till I got loose to love me he loved me even though I was still tied up. My God, somebody hear me. He didn't wait till I got free, but while I was still tied up in sin, he loved me. While I was still tied up in my past, he loved me. While I was still tied up in my failure, he loved me. While I was still tied up in my yesterday, he loved me. Isn't it something? Isn't it wonderful? Isn't it something that he didn't wait until I got loose to start loving me? He loved me before. And he said, matter of fact, I'll love you so much, I'll step into wherever you might be, the crack house, the whole house. It don't matter, baby. He'll come to where you are and deliver you if you will let him. When he loses as you say here I am God lead me now to where you want me to go hallelujah see they're tied up here's what God was saying he said when you're all tied up and wrapped up in sin Jesus said here's where they are and when you find them tell them they're mine and I have need of them and when you tell them I'm, when, you, when you find them tell them I'm coming and I'm going to loose them from everything that has them bound. See, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, that we're made of the dust. Not dirt, dust. And I heard people get up and preach that we were made from dirt. No, baby, we wasn't even dirt. We were dust. Dirt has a little bit more substance than dust. We're just dust. Little girl heard that one day in Sunday school. She went home and she told her mama, she said, Mama... Because she, she, the, the, the teacher told him that we were made of the dust, and when we die, we're going back to dust. She said, Mama, I don't know who it is, but see, there's somebody's being born or dying in, under my bed. I don't know if they're coming or going, but there's a bunch of dust under my bed. Come on, somebody. But when God found you, you were next to nothing. When God found you, your Bible said he made you from the dust of the earth. It's next to nothing. And when God looses you, he leads you where he wants you to be. You can't be all haughty because you think you can do something. Everything that God has done has done me good. He didn't loose me 
to run around aimlessly. He loosed me to lead me. He loosed me to lead me where he wants me because he has need of me. He has a purpose for me. Write this down, Acts 26, 16. But arise and stand on your feet for this purpose. I have appeared to you to appoint you a minister and a witness, not only to the things which you have seen, but also to the things in which I will appear to you. You may not understand it right now. And it may astonish your critics, but God's got a purpose for you. Man, when I got saved in 1985 is when I gave my heart to Christ. I never dreamed that I'd be doing what I do. That I'd be a pastor? Really? When you met me when I was 12? He wanted to slap me. Some of y'all are like, I'm still there right now. <laughs> Don't try. Would you turn the other cheek? You better pray I do. For some, he'll hide your purpose until you're ready to handle it. Pastor Steve and I were talking in his office today. And I remembered back when they used to come, come to church. And they'd drive two separate cars. And we'd start worshiping. He'd go smoke a cigarette. Drive down the road smoking a cigarette. And then come back. And I thought, I'll never forget. I, I remember seeing the little smug face. You remember? Yeah. And I thought, Man, that guy's a punk. I just want to punch him in his face. You know, he'd walk around church like this. Now I think it's so cool because when he really gets annoyed, he puts that, puts that hand in that pocket. Like he's got polio or something, you know. You got touching him. And it's, a, it's amazing how tight we are and how close we are. Because that's what God will do. He'll hide your purpose. I mean, if you'd have told me he was going to be our executive pastor, I would have said, you stupid. If you'd have told me that Crystal Dexter was going to be our children's pastor's wife, you're crazy. If you'd have told me Josh, I'd have said, you're an idiot. But God will hide your purpose. God will hide it till you're ready to handle it. But God loosed you for a reason. God loosed you so that he can lead you. How many of us will let him lead us? He knows what you're capable of when you don't. If he would have showed you If he had showed you what he had in store for you, it would have scared you to death. I can tell you, man, when I first started pastoring, my first church was 18. I remember going into that little church thinking, man, if I could ever get to 100, God, I'll never ask you for another thing. We got close to it in that little church in Blunchtown. Where's that at? Go to the end of the earth, take a left, you're almost there. There's only a few people who know where Blunstown is. I know Dave and them does. Because they had to go through there. God knows you wouldn't want to stop through there. Yeah. <laughs> Tomorrow. Yeah, make sure you got gas in your car. God didn't loose you to run around aimlessly. You thought you were destined to be a... You know, I'm trying to quit. I really am. When I got saved on that little Sunday night at that little church in Sand Hills, I thought, well, I'm saved. I can play the piano. That's what I'm going to do for the Lord. And God said, no, I'm going to call you to preach. I go, no, you ain't. No. 
And, and everybody gets confused because they hear the first part of this, but they, they, don't hear, they don't continue on to the last part of this. Because I said, I can't, I can't be a preacher because I don't like people. And the people I liked the least was church people. And then when he called me to preach, I thought I'd be an evangelist. I could blow in, blow up, blow out. I could tell everybody off and leave. No. So God began to deal with me about pastoring. I, you, most of you know the story. I began to say, God, you got to do something then. Because I don't like people. No, I, I, you know, three days, they leaving. I, try, I promise you. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But God began to put a love in me that I didn't even know was there because He can do it. He changed my nature from not liking people to loving people. Matter of fact, to the point I've asked God to quit making me love everybody because I actually... It's my heart breaks to see People go through some of the things that they're going through. And I just want to slap them because if they would just listen, I could help them through this, but they won't listen. They listen, but they don't do. You're not destined just to be loosed, but for the king's purpose and the king to ride upon you in your spirit. Point number three is this, and I'm done. God promises to be our God when we separate ourselves from the world. What's my last one, Craig? God will be there when everybody has given up on you. I don't want you to raise your hand because I don't want to embarrass nobody, but I, have you ever felt like that everybody gave up on you? I want you to know that God hasn't. He loosed you to lead you. You know, I, I look around, and, and I don't want to embarrass anybody, but I just see so many people in this room that God has done such a work in your life and is doing such a work. I thank God. I see people who used to be addicts, now business owners in this room. Hallelujah. And listen to me. What God did for the person you look up to, He can do for you. Let me give you some scripture. Write them down. John chapter 1 verse 5. And the light shineth in darkness. The darkness comprehended it not. John 8 12 says. And then spake Jesus again unto them saying. I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. But shall have the light of life. Colossians 1 13. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. And hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Stand to your feet tonight. I want you to ask the question. And you're the only one who can answer it. Everybody else will speculate, but you're the only one, you and God. Lord, I've been saved. you got to answer that question. And if you've been saved, Lord, have I let you lead me? Or am I just running aimlessly around? Every head bowed, every eye closed. I know it's Wednesday night, but if you don't know Jesus, I just feel like I need to do that. If you don't know Jesus, I want to give you that opportunity. I give you my word. I'm not going to embarrass you. But you don't know Jesus and you want to ask him to come into your life, would you just slip up your hand? You can put it right back down. Hallelujah. Thank you. I see that hand. God bless you. Honey. Maybe you're not where you need to be with Christ. And you say, Pastor, I need to get it right. Come on, slip up your hand. You can put it right back down. I see those hands all over this building. Now I'm going to pray. I want everybody to look at me for a moment. I'm going to pray for that one that raised your hand for salvation and quite a few of you for to get things right with God. And I want you to hear me closely. All right, now. This is Wednesday night. I'm pastoring you. I don't want you just to go, 
yeah, pastor, I need to get some things right, and then not do anything. I want you to say, pastor, I need to get some things right, and I want God to lead me. See, people get in trouble usually when they're idle. People get into trouble when you don't let the Lord and the Holy Spirit lead you. That's when you get in trouble. you gotta, you got to feel that void. So let's pray. Spirit Life team, come real quickly. Father, in the name of Jesus, everybody pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I, come in, I ask you to come into my life and forgive me of my sin. From this day forward, I will live for you and you will be my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give Jesus a hand of praise. <clears throat> hey, tonight if you need prayer, you want prayer. Maybe you did raise your hand, or maybe, maybe what I preached didn't even touch you tonight. It was something else, but you need prayer. Let's take about five or ten minutes. You need prayer. Step out of your seat right now. Come on. You, you need prayer. Come on right now. Come on, lead us, jo Josh. Oh, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. Pour, pour out our praise. praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. Pour out our praise. It's your breath. In our lives, so we pour out Come on. our praise. Come on. Pour out our praise and show breath in our lives. So we pour out our praise. Pour out our praise and show breath in our lives. So we pour out our praise. Pour out our praise. So we pour out our praise to you only. We're going to minister around the altars. God bless you. You're dismissed. We'll see you Sunday morning. God bless you.